Grilled, fried, or broiled, we love our chicken. Now comes word of an innovation cooked up in a lab that's good news for everyone, especially the chicken. Here's Allison Aubrey of NPR. For thousands of years, humans have slaughtered animals for meat. But Dr. Uma Valetti dreamt of a different way. You don't have to kill a chicken to eat chicken. He figured out how to grow meat directly from animal cells. It's completely different from Beyond Meat or Impossible, which are made from plant-based ingredients, including vegetable proteins. This is real meat, no compromise, made in front of you. So you grew this chicken in these tanks behind us yes. without ever slaughtering a chicken? You could ask me that a, a thousand times, and the answer is yes, 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 we grew it right here. They're getting the oxygen. That the His company, need. Upside and Foods, just received clearance from the USDA to start selling their meat, made at this production center in Emeryville, California. We'll be able to produce 50 to 75,000 pounds of meat every year, right away. The process begins here. Animal cells have been extracted from an egg or live chicken. All the cells that make the cut of high quality cells make it into this seed lab. This is the equivalent of a hatchery. The cells are frozen in tiny vials. And from that small amount, we can grow thousands of pounds of meat. So it only takes a thimble full of cells to start the whole process of growing thousands of pounds of meat. Yeah. Coaxing the cells to multiply and grow into meat is part alchemy. So this is a live cultivator. That means this is actually right now involved in growing chicken. This turbine mixes in all the food the cells need to grow. Amino acids, fats, vitamins. The idea really is when an animal is alive, there's blood circulating, constantly something is moving around in the animal's body, touching the cells in the animal's body. We're just recreating that. Valetti says in about 10 days, these cells have grown into chicken that's ready to cook. Just a few years ago, everybody was saying, this is science fiction. Yes. Making 50,000 pounds of chicken a year, it was, it's like a dream come true. Growing up in India, his big dream was to become a cardiologist, a dream he realized with the help of his parents. They always knew my goal in life was to become a cardiologist, and I only wanted to train at the Mayo Clinic. And uh, I trained at the Mayo Clinic. It was not easy to get there, and it was a lot of work. Working with heart attack patients, his team set out to use stem cells to regrow heart muscle. And he figured, why not grow animal meat in a similar way? I realized that we were raising 70 billion animals every year to feed about 7 billion people. When I looked at the environmental impact of that, it was an astronomical impact. And the amount of feed that goes to feed animals, to feed us, that equation just seemed wrong. Livestock is responsible for an estimated one-third of all human-induced methane emissions, a potent greenhouse gas. And so though Valetti loved to eat meat, he had become a vegetarian. But the scientist in him saw a solution. And his father, a veterinarian, was an early supporter. He loved animals. It wasn't just his dad who saw the opportunity. The very first venture capitalist that Valetti wrote to said yes. I did not even know what a VC meant at that point. That was about eight years ago. Now, there's nearly $3 billion invested in more than 100 cultivated meat startups around the globe, says Bruce Friedrich. He's head of the nonprofit Good Food Institute, which promotes alternative proteins. Even companies like Tyson and Cargill, the two largest meat companies in the United States, they have both invested in two different cultivated meat companies. A report from Boston Consulting Group estimates that if just 11 percent of meat was swapped for protein alternatives like cultivated meat, by 2035, it would have the same environmental impact as switching 95 percent of airplanes to renewable energy. Cultivated meat requires a fraction of the land, uh, requires a fraction of the water, doesn't require antibiotics in the production. This is just a whole new way of making the exact same meat that people love 
Not everyone is convinced. Critics say whether cultivated meat can cut carbon dioxide emissions depends in part on whether its production facilities are powered by renewable fuel. The meat industry currently has the efficiency of its large scale. It needs to compete on price and taste. Cultivated meat already competes on taste. It's already there, but it's got a ways to go before it competes on price. It needs to scale up. So until then, it will be priced at a premium. We got a taste of Upside's chicken, which was pan-seared with white wine, lemon, and butter. Well, this is chicken piccata, presented just like you would get at a wonderful restaurant in the neighborhood. Hmm, very chewy. And you want that. Definitely meat. the texture yes. of chicken. It, it tastes just like chicken. It is chicken. We've been talking about it. <laughs> chicken without killing a chicken. You cannot buy this meat in grocery stores yet, but just last weekend, Michelin-starred chef Dominique Crenn served it to customers for the first time ever in her San Francisco <laughs> restaurant. For Valetti, upside success is bittersweet. He lost his father to COVID, just as he struggled to get the company off the ground. I feel my dad's presence every day in my life. Um, I think he's seen me growing up and wanting to go after things that matter a lot. So I think he's there cheering. It was tough to walk away from his promising career in medicine. But Valetti says he's not looking back. This seems very unreasonable to everybody in the world. But I think we'll need people who are unreasonable to be able to change what we don't like in this world.